Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to the boat shop. I know it's been a long time. Uh, this video is prompted by, uh, I can't remember who it was. Uh, somebody complained. I put a uh, picture on my, on my uh, YouTube account. It's under a communities tab. I don't know if you've seen it. But I sent a picture of the, uh, my completed steering shaft. Uh, and then I got picked on because uh, they wanted to see how it was done. I built these myself. And uh, I just sent a picture, thought, well, this is a neat thing to put a picture of. And right away I get a response. Boy, I was disappointed it wasn't a video. So, all right, here's a video on how to build that. Uh, we'll talk more about uh, my hardware setup and so on in here later. We'll just focus on the one thing this time. Just wanted to show you that uh, I do have things set up and working. Uh, I think I'm pretty happy with it. Mounting that uh, throttle servo down underneath there was kind of an interesting little challenge. Look at that. See that guy buzzing? If any of you are familiar with this uh, particular transmitter, I'd be curious to hear about it. Uh, I just got it recently uh, because I wanted to use a waterproof receiver. Um, and so my Futaba wouldn't connect with this, uh, this style. So there we go. Um, and uh, I'm not sure. This guy does some weird stuff once in a while. And so we'll see if I like it over time. But anyway, let's shut that off because that servo is buzzing. Shut this guy down. Uh, and let's talk steering shaft. Uh, the way I build these is I use uh, your basic arrow shaft, right? You're going to go to uh, any sporting goods store and, and get you an arrow shaft. And uh, hack the ends off whatever length you need, you know, mount your hardware so that you're ready to go. Um, your servo arm, you might be able to tell I have it uh, tilted back slightly in what you might say is the left direction, but that's where I want it for when my rudder is straight because as you begin to turn, of course, it stands up and about as far as you ever turn, it's just little tiny bits. And uh, I like 90 degrees on, on things, and so when you start to turn, you're at a, you're at a perfect 90, it's strongest point. Uh, and I just like that. So anyway, I set it up with a slight, you might say, left in the uh, servo arm, and that's okay. And uh, then you've got your aero shaft cut. These, I make these on the lathe. Uh, I have just a small, old, cheap Atlas lathe. You can do it, man, get one. Put it in your garage, it'll fit. They're not very big. Uh, you can get one of those little Chinese lathes uh, that you can get down at Harbor Freight and make this sort of thing. It's out of aluminum. This one's a discard. Uh, I didn't like the size. It's a tiny bit loose. I went a couple thousands under. And the end isn't super sexy, you see. I've gone to this uh, uh, super groovy looking uh, end there. Uh, the hole I drill is uh, pretty precise in size. Uh, it actually won't fit through the threads on a 440 rod. So what you're going to do is you're going to get your little guy ready. See some grooves? What for? Uh, that's just to hold the glue. You'll see. Uh, by the way, I got another uh, comment on that, that picture that I posted. And someone said, well, why didn't they just run the rod all the way? Uh, why? Because it's heavy. This is heavy. This weighs nothing. Uh, really rigid. Or this guy, I can make this guy go all over the place, right? So uh, we're saving weight. It uh, is more rigid and it looks really cool. Okay, so what we're going to do is get our rod, 440 rod, thread it on one end, put your ball link on, whatever you like to use, don't care. Okay, I use ball links, I like them uh, quick and easy. Yeah, and they've been. 100% trustworthy for me. Uh, thread it on, I didn't go on all the way here. This is strictly a demonstration piece. And your little aluminum guy is gonna go on, okay? Remember, it won't go by the threads, so this guy has to be on there first. Now you've cut this to about the length you think you're gonna want it, and you're gonna assemble it. Let's get this out of here. You're gonna work on both ends, okay? So you got both ends ready, and you assemble this guy and you install it. I know, it's just loose, but that's okay. You're gonna install it. 
And you're just gonna have to use your imagination that I've installed the other end, okay? Strictly a demonstration because somebody wanted it, all right? And I don't blame you. You know, sometimes I make assumptions that, uh, you know, stuff that I've been doing for a long time, uh, some guys don't know how to do it. And so this is a way to help. Uh, all right, so you're gonna set it up. You're gonna set your rudder where you want it. You're gonna set your servo arm where you want it. And then you're gonna mark this shaft, right? You don't want it way back here because then it's gonna bump on its way through. So we're gonna leave some room here at the back. And I've actually already marked it. But you can make whatever assumption you want. You say, all right, it's gonna be right there. And you put your Sharpie mark and you do the same on the other end. You can do one at a time, I don't care, but you can just do them both. Take this guy back out, all right? Now, we know where we want it. We want it right there. So we're gonna put a mark on the other side. Okay, slide this guy forward. You're gonna grab a nice, strong pair of pliers. I'm gonna grab hold right close to that mark. And I'm gonna give this a 90 degree bend, okay? I'm not doing that right now, because I wanna be able to use this rod. But, I've got one I already put a bend in for you, okay? Remember, this guy is still on there. This is our threaded end with our ball link on it. And I've put a 90 degree bend and then cut it down to just a little tiny thing, okay? It needs to stick out a ways past the aluminum. All right, we got that. Now we've got our piece. We know that's the size we want. How are we gonna put it in here? Oh, look at that. <laughs> this is one of those uh, mirror things where we can see into forever. Uh, Dremel, right? Little tiny ball. Super cheap. Super cheap one of these little, they call them diamond. I don't think it's diamond. Uh, little cheap ball set. We're going to put this guy up here. And we're going to drop it. So we see right where that needs to go, right? And we're going to put a little tiny mark. going to fire up our Dremel and it's going to pop right through here real quick and easy. Okay, I already did it. Pops right through, open the hole up slightly till you get it the right size. Okay, see how that guy goes in there nice? You know I'm a fan of G-Flex. If you've been watching my videos, this stuff mixes one to one. Uh, it gives a pretty long working time and it's super cool. Uh, it has a slightly, uh, I don't wanna say soft, cause then you'll think it's weak. Um, it has a slightly pliable result. You feel like you can stick your fingernail into it, but you can't. This is dried, right? For a couple of days worth. Uh, that's why they call it flex. Uh, but uh, I use a lot of West systems too. Uh, a regular old epoxy, uh, marine epoxy. Uh, I use it for sealing. Uh, that sort of thing, but G-Flex allows me a little bit of flexibility, which I need because I crash a lot um, And I want my boats to last forever. So this doesn't come apart. Uh, it really adheres well um, West systems if you mix in one of these cups here You'll find you can pop it out after it's dried and you've got a cool little part You know like you mold it apart G-Flex it doesn't want to come out of here even on this smooth surface It hangs on and you can't get that guy to come out. So Loving it, one-to-one, -one, super easy to use, uh, awesome, uh, in any construction type format. So, all right, we've mixed up our G-Flex. You're gonna uh, put a bunch of it inside the tube, okay? You're gonna make a little bit run out of the hole you made. You're gonna put some on here. Remember what these grooves are for? These grooves are for retaining some glue. So you're gonna put a bunch of G-Flex on here. Slide this guy up. This end goes in, pops into the hole. Shove this guy in. Clean off the excess glue that comes out. Sit it down somewhere with this part straight down. Uh, it'll allow some of the glue to drip out. Don't worry about that as it drips out and you sit it there overnight. This guy is in there, not going anywhere. Super stout, much better than nothing but a rod and much lighter and much cooler looking. 
sits overnight, go over to your grinder, grind that up a little bit till it looks kind of pretty. If you're thinking, you put both of those in line, and when you install it, you install it with those down. And it just looks like uh, you're some kind of super cool wizard uh, at building shafts. Uh, these are available online um, in a uh, not as pretty version. Um, I like mine. I think I'm partial to it. I uh, wonder why. Uh, I think they look great. Um, I don't know what all this black powder is. Some carbon fiber from the grinding, I guess. Uh, so yeah, that's how I do it. This end I do pretty close. Why? So I can use less steel because remember steel is heavy. Uh, two, it's more rigid, so I like that. This end I leave some room. Uh, because like we already talked about, you need that type of room so that it's not running into the hole in your transom. Okay, so I get beautiful full range of motion with this setup. I uh, got left myself a fair bit of adjustability on each end. But if you do a good job, mark it carefully, you're going to drop it in and it's going to fit perfect and look awesome. Okay, so that's how we're doing that. Um, I have a lot more to talk to you about. As you can see, I've been kind of putting some things together. Uh, mounted the, uh, the rudder, uh, the rudder mount. Got it beautifully square. That's the beautiful thing about having a nice square jig is you can make stuff just perfect and you've always got a perfect surface to work on. Uh, but we're gonna talk about motor mounts. Uh, we're gonna talk about servo mounting. We're gonna talk about some radio gear uh, and some other things, um, but that's coming up later. You can see we're working on our shaft, working on my motor angle. Uh, I'll get all that information for you, okay? Meanwhile, uh, the way to see that is subscribe. Please go down and subscribe to the channel. Uh, it helps other guys because YouTube sees that and they like it and they'll put the videos up more, okay? If you like it, please give it a like because that'll help too, all right? Okay, shut off your uh, phone, shut off your TV, get out in your shop and get to work. Uh, we got boats to build, all right? Racing season's bearing down on us. See you later.